Hello, 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 and welcome to me being a chaotic mess. Anyway, today we are going to be reading the self-proclaimed king of booktube himself's favourite books. So the guy in question here is Jack Edwards, and he reads a lot of very sad and depressing literary fiction, so that'll be what I'll be reading a lot of today. Anyway, he has made his coin mostly for reading celebrities' favourite books. So let's see if I can make my coin reading Jack's favourites. This is all about passion and death and trying to grapple with both your head and your heart. Giovanni's Ruin by James Baldwin is just a masterclass in writing. And right from the first line, it had me. It had me gripped. Do you want to know the name of the book that gets the award for the most brutal sexism I've ever read? 10 out of 10 would use to squash him off. For goodness sake, why, why did you do this to me? I think you should all be warned by just how ridiculous the sexism is. Right, let's get the old laptop up. So here's the quote. These absurd women running around today full of ideas and nonsense and thinking themselves equal to men. They need to be beaten. The word beaten is literally used. Half to death. So they can find out who rules the world. I mean, there's sexism and then there's Giovanni. Man deserves a death sentence, if you know what I mean. In terms of narrative structure, that was a bit too much foreshadowing for me. To the point where I guessed how the tragic event that we're kind of foreshadowed about, I kind of worked out how it would play out, which was a little annoying. I mean, the writing was quite good until we have, you know, the brutal sexism. And after that, I just kind of became quite predictable and a little irritating. And to be honest, after, after the the line. I just, I just wanted to throw this book across the room, to be honest. And that's the second one this year. I can see why this was in a charity shop. I suppose there's some conversation to be had about how much you can excuse language from the time, because this was written in the 50s. But to be honest, I, there's like light sexism, and then there's beating women. It, it's quite a range. Moving on. We're gonna forget I've ever read it. This probably wins the award for the loveliest writing I read this year. It was so sublime. I wish I could write like this. I wish I could write even slightly like this. I just wanted to extract it all, blend it up, fill up a tub with it, and then just bathe in it. Hello. I, I can't talk very much um, because, I mean, listen to my voice. Anyway, I finished Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield, and I have to say that I, I wouldn't say it's like a new favourite book of all time, but it could become one over, like, if I don't read anything else this year that I really, really love. Because I thought this was, was really good. I thought it was incredibly well written, and I think it really got this message of grief across, because it's about this character and their wife has essentially been on this deep sea exploration and then she's come back and she's completely different and she's changed and there's something ominous going on because our main character keeps trying to contact the organization that their wife works at and they, all of the responses is, are just really really vague and we don't really know quite what this deep sea exploration thing actually meant because they were only meant to be there for like three weeks um, but they ended up being there for like six months I thought the depiction of grief was really good because it's grieving something that used to be, even though that person is still alive, it kind of felt like almost an allegory for for dementia because a similar thing kind of happens with that condition. It got pretty creepy and pretty weird as it went on because I was really just quite intrigued to see where the horror elements would go. The atmosphere was definitely there. We got little interjections from um, the wife's perspective of like what was actually going on, and it was really creepy. They were very short, but I think that really helped keep the suspense. The book itself is also only like 200 pages long. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really atmospheric, really quite creepy, and I just, I think it did what it set out to do really well, and I just, I couldn't recommend it enough. <laughs> focuses on who gets a voice and who is silenced, whose narratives are told. It's written in such an experimental way, basically, that it moves around kind of like a camera. So sometimes we switch from different people's point of views, sometimes it's from an inanimate object. And what slowly builds up is this rich tapestry of a completely unflinching and sharp social and character study. I'm currently reading The Promise. And to be honest, I don't really know what's going on and where it's leading to. I don't know, I'm finding it quite hard to imagine 
imagine everything that's going on for some reason, just the way it's written. Oh yeah, that gets me on to another thing. I don't like the writing particularly. It's trying to be nice and descriptive, but it just, it just, some of the descriptions are just a bit weird. I don't have a specific example of, off the top of my head, but th those are just my initial thoughts, like 50 pages in. I am a proper Londoner, because I drink out of a prep mug. Yes, I may not live in London, but that doesn't mean I wasn't born there. Anyway, we're gonna talk about this book. So in the last clip, I said that I didn't really understand what was going on. I now just completely do not understand the point of this book. I should have just given up, but I progressed for this video. That was the only reason I progressed. Essentially, this book is about this family, but I have no idea why we are following them, really. I don't get it. I also don't get the narrative structure because every kind of like 50 pages or so we jump in time and there would be some death in the family and this would kind of be bringing them back to each other but I don't really get it because we were just like we were trying to warm up to these characters but they had no personality I can't tell you anything about these characters because there's nothing to say so that already put me at even further distance from these characters because I already didn't care and then because we were time jumping and they kind of like had a completely different life in some cases I really just didn't get it I really don't understand this book I don't and it's and it's a sad literary fiction and there's meant to be no plot, basically, because it's like real life and it's not just some plot book where there's a lot of stuff happening. How this won the Booker Prize is honestly beyond me. And I don't want to just kind of say don't read this book, but I don't get it. I'm really sorry. I just, I don't understand why this won the Booker Prize. And this is now the second book that's won the Booker Prize that I just, I don't understand. The other one was Shuggy Bane, more like Shuggy Boring. It just felt like the kind of book that was written primarily to win awards. This one, the writing was so kind of strange and not good strange because strange writing where, when the book is meant to be strange, like it's a horror or something, Brilliant, I love that. This is a sad literary fiction. I don't understand what the author was trying to do. And when the author's intentions aren't clear, then the kind of whole point of the book is just, just feels completely redundant. And I just kind of looked at it and I thought, why are you here? And that that's just not very kind, but it's my opinion on this book. The way I see it, books fall into two categories. Either the author is trying to make a point or there's some kind of message that is in their book or the author comes up with a really cool concept and they want to explore that concept. This is a family drama, so it kind of falls into the second thing. So what are you trying to achieve with this book? But that just wasn't clear at all. I don't get it. It was kind of trying to be a kind of depiction of race in South Africa, but because we kept jumping around in time and it was just, it was touched on for like barely any time at all. And then on the other hand, it was trying to be like a family saga drama thing about this family on this farm in South Africa. But it still didn't really do that either. Because if you're having a family drama, then we should be caring about the characters. And I didn't give a literal damn about anyone in this book. And I just wasted so much of my time reading this. I'm, lit I'm literally annoyed. I'm annoyed, this thing's making me annoyed. And when a book makes me annoyed, it gets one star. I, I mean, I literally cannot find a single redeeming quality for this. I'm really sorry. I just went into a whole rant about how I don't understand the point of this book. If anyone could tell me, please do, but I, I just don't get it. Okay, um, this is a kind of final wrap up thing of like the entire video because I've read all the books I need to read and this is kind of just like the reflection. A quick recap of everything I've read. So I read Giovanni's Room, which I'm still not really decided on my thoughts about this book because there were strengths and there were a lot of weaknesses. And you know, the, the, the brutal sexism line, I just, I don't, I still can't get over it. Then we have Our Wives Under the Sea, which to be honest, I kind of think I would enjoy this book regardless of whether I had picked it up specifically on Jack's recommendation or just by myself. I do think that Jack and I are probably quite compatible when it comes to like weird books because I know we both really liked Bunny by Mona Reward. And then just now I finished The Promise by Dalman Galgut and I hated it. And I'm, I'm sorry. This did not go too well. It really did not. I should have just read Piranesi. I really should have done because somebody, somebody actually recommended that book to me in the comments. So 
I will probably do like a reading books my viewers recommended to me video at some point in the future. This has been an interesting experience. I don't really know what to take of it. But that is the end, I guess, because I really need to do my French homework because otherwise I'll get behind and I don't want to do that. Goodbye.